we have uh, Neuron Pharmaceuticals, uh, a specialist in CNS disorders, particularly schizophrenia, and we have the CEO, Stefan Weber, to uh, discuss things with us. Could you please tell us about the intended use of evomonide in the treatment of schizophrenia alongside the current standard of care? So evomonide is a new mechanism of action, a new treatment paradigm in schizophrenia that we are developing and we are getting ready for initiation of the phase three uh, pivotal development program. Uh, the real differential thing about evenomide is that it does not overlap mechanistically with any of the current medications on the market. We have zero overlap and we have measured it on more than 130 targets in the human body. There is no overlap at all of our mechanism, which is a voltage gate sodium channel blockade compared to today's drugs, which are all uh, dopaminergic, serotonergic drugs. The issue is that after 18 months, 74% of today's patients taking those best-selling drugs, being olanzapine, risperidone, quetiapine, aripiprazole, from all the market leaders, be it Lilly, J, J, A, Z, or Azuka, 74% after 18 months will have stopped taking their medication, either due to material side effects or because simply the drugs do not provide the full benefit to the patients. And that is where we say, instead of those patients hopping from one drug to the next one, which just has a slightly different safety profile, uh, why don't you add our drug, Evenomide, as the first and only approved add-on treatment to patients suffering from schizophrenia, uh, giving them additional benefits, and so far no incremental side effects compared to their current medication. We understand you're developing two indications for evamide uh, in the development scheme uh, and could you run through the first of those please yes sure this is really going to that large part of the population that i just mentioned you're talking about one percent of the population usually starting around the age of 18 and we're talking about lifelong treatment uh, one percent of the pop population suffering from schizophrenia and as i mentioned just a minute ago 74% of those patients after 18 months will have stopped their medication. This is where our first indication comes into play. The patients and their doctors should decide not to switch drugs from one of the dopaminergic serotonergic drugs to another one, but they should add evenomide as the first approved add-on treatment to those patients. That is a huge indication. Uh, obviously, this uh, would be a blockbuster candidate if the drug confirmed uh, its benefits in a phase three study. And that is the phase three study, the first pivotal study that we are going to initiate in 2021, around second quarter, which will take about 18 months to read out. This will be patients who are on the current second generation antipsychotics who start seeing the symptoms come back, the benefits going away, these patients should add evenomide to their current antipsychotics and see the additional benefits with no relevant side effects in addition to their current medication so far. Uh, this is such a large indication that at a certain point in time uh, that we will have to partner to co-develop or to license this indication to a, an external partner. Uh, could you describe the second, more specific indication? Yes, well, the first indication is an indication which we will have to partner. Uh, you know, our intention is to be a sustainable commercial company ourselves. So what we have decided is that we will also develop evenomide in an issue indication. And we are now talking about those patients who are treatment resistant to their current antipsychotics. That is about 30% of the population sooner or later will no longer react to current antipsychotics. For those patients, there's only one way to go today, and that's clozapine, a very old drug uh, with incredible benefits to those patients who take the compound, but also with potentially terrible side effects, which could kill the patients. And that is why every patient who wants to take clozapine will have to register and he will have to undergo regular blood tests. So as soon as the white blood cells in the, in the blood samples go down, the patients will have to discontinue treatment. So only a small fraction of the patients who would qualify to take clozapine effectively take the compound. 
And of those who take it, about 30% again will become treatment resistant to clozapine. This is about 30,000 patients in the United States. So it's a very small, we call it an often like indication. And the agreement with the regulatory bodies is, given that those patients have nowhere to go today, that based on one positive phase three study that we would perform again, starting Q2, mid 2021, again, about 18 months to complete, that based on one successful study, we might get a, an approvable drug uh, for uh, clozapine treatment resistant schizophrenia patients. And we might even prior to formal approval qualify for expanded or early access in that indication. This is obviously an, indi an indication given that most of the patients will be in the large veteran state hospitals, East and West Coast, uh, that with a team of about 10 people, we could commercialize ourselves and it could be good for 200, 250 million dollars in the US alone per year. That is an indication that we would love to commercialize ourselves uh, at Nuremberg. You also have an approved and marketed product, Zidago, for Parkinson's disease. How is this position in the competitive market and how are US sales developing with a new licensee? Yes, so this compound was the first new chemical entity in Parkinson's disease approved in the European Union uh, in 2015 and in the United States in 2017 for more than a decade. So there was barely any innovation. We saw a lot of new formulations, but no new mechanism of action. So Sedago, uh, has a significantly differentiated label in the European Union. The label states that this is a drug that first time ever has a dual mechanism of action. So it is not only acting on the dopaminergic pathway, but it also is working on the glutamatergic pathway, which uh, as per today's science, is the key to reducing dyskinesia. Now dyskinesia is one of the complexities of today's Parkinson's therapy. It's a side effect of the most used drug in Parkinson's disease, levodopa. Dyskinesia are uncontrollable painful movements that affect about 40% of Parkinson's patients today. So the European label clearly says that our drug has a dual mechanism targeting both objectives. Uh, and it also says that uh, safenamide, Zodago, was the first drug ever tested in double-blind placebo control studies for two years time period, while everybody else has just done six months. So the European label clearly refers to results of the two year study in which we could show that patients who started taking Sedago and coming back after two years duration of the study were still doing better than when they entered the study, which is very important news to patients who suffer from a progressive disease like Parkinson's disease. Now, unfortunately, the label in the United States is not that rich, but it's a plain vanilla label add on to levodopa in patients with motor fluctuations. That is why the sales performance in Europe is reasonably good, uh, driven by our partner, Sambon, uh, but we want to improve the commercial potential of the compound in the United States. And we have two angles here, and you mentioned one already, while the drug was originally licensed to US World Meds, uh, a private company uh, in the United States, they have now transferred the rights to Sodago in the United States to Supernos, who we deem to be a very potent and publicly run company in the United States who should take Sodago to its full potential. The second step though is that we want to run a new label study for this compound that would uh, open uh, the door to the uh, dyskinesia uh, indication in the United States, most importantly. How do you plan to run this study in the additional dyskinesia indication? Yes, so what we have, John, is we do have a mechanism which not only we say, but also the EMA says and the American Academy of Neurology at the time when we disclosed the results said this is truly uh, important. This is the largest, longest, most positive study ever run and completed in dyskinesia patients. We have those results from that phase three study, uh, which I mentioned, in which we did show the benefits on dyskinesia in more than 200 patients in a subpopulation. So all we need to do is to run one dedicated study 
in patients who all have, so 100% have dyskinesia at baseline. And the study design will be a copy practically of the study design used by the one compound so far approved for that large indication, and that is Adama's new formulation a month, which comes though with a lot of side effects and a pretty aggressive pricing given they have made it an orphan drug. So the idea is that with our partner Sambon, we will run a dedicated study in uh, levodopa-induced dyskinesia starting early 2021, taking about two years time, including recruitment, treatment, and readout, getting the new label, which would still leave us with nine years patent law. And the feedback we have from the FDA preliminarily is that if that study should come out uh, significant, so beneficially, uh, that we would get a new label based on that one study only. This would make Sedago a unique combination of a drug that improves Parkinsonism and at the same time reduces dyskinesia. And even better, uh, it would be a once a day pill, which is easy to swallow and does not have any relevant side effects. That's what I can say after the drug being on the market for more than five years in Europe. Uh, and it would be attractively priced compared to the very high uh, pricing of Adama's formulation of Martadine right now. That could take Sadago to a unique positioning, especially in the United States, which would be the largest market for it. Could you tell us the cash position and outlook for funding, given that two large phase three trials are expected in 2021? Sure. So what we have just reported, and that's effective June 30 of this year, we do have 40 million euros cash in the bank. On top of that, we can call for another 15 million euros on the funding line that we signed with the European Investment Bank. As we are looking at a horizon of two years time, we should add two years of royalty income uh, for Sadaro. That should add at least 10, 12 million if I don't uh, include any increase in the royalties, which we should expect. And if I add to that two years of cashing in on the Italian, uh, uh, on the Italian R&D tax credit, then I end up with a number of 70 million euros uh, of funds that we can use for development of those studies. And remember, John, we are a pretty small team, just 24 FTEs, so our cash burn for the corporation is very limited. Uh, that means that the 70 million euros that we can put to play in the next two years will help us get to the inflection points that we have just discussed. <laughs> 